Okay, as we sit up nice and tall, let's bring our hands to our thighs, face up or face down. Grow a little taller through your spine, and then I invite you to close your eyes. And as we close our eyes, and just allowing ourselves to become a little bit more authentic to what's going on to the inside of ourselves. And to give ourselves a moment of, of that deeper connection where the outside world starts to kind of dissolve away and our inside world becomes more and more clear, uh, more present. And let's take a few breaths in and out of our nose to our belly and ribs. Trying to breathe into your belly first, then your ribs, then your chest, like a wave from the base of your spine up towards your collarbones. And then you reverse that wave when you exhale, collarbones, ribs, and belly. See if you can do that just for a few times to settle into the space that you've cultivated for yourself. And connecting here with community, even though we're all on screens, we are all connected by energy. Throughout this practice, we're going to focus very deeply on acknowledging how we feel and placing some trust in ourselves, in our higher selves, in times of difficulty or this a very unusual time that we're having right now. So as you're breathing in and out of your nose to your belly and ribs, Let's bring our hands to our heart, one hand, left hand, excuse me, on the chest and then right hand on top, right around the heart center area. If this feels a little uncomfortable or unusual for you, definitely do it. Do your best to do it because this is one of our ways through touch we can connect to ourselves simply by touching our own hearts. And then take three deep breaths into your hands, filling the front and back of your heart between your shoulder blades. We take these profound acknowledgement breaths into our heart space, our center of love and joy. Be mindful to stay connected to the weight of your sit bones on the earth, knowing you are also supported there. There's one thing in this world we can always count on that is always consistent. And that is who you are on the inside, your essence. The deep well of love that resides within. Nothing on the outside world can ever shatter or shake that within you. Even if you feel a little disconnected from right now, it is still there. One more deep breath into your heart. Sigh through the mouth. making a commitment today to acknowledge every moment, every feeling, doing our best not to push away, but to surrender to the flow of this practice and your emotions and the freedom that can come with that acknowledgement. If let's open our eyes, inhale, reach your arms overhead, give yourself a full stretch, nice and tall. And as you reach to the crown of your head, feel your sit bones root down, breathe into your side ribs. If you'll bring your hands down. I'm not going to mirror you today because it's a little complicated on Instagram. You're going to bring uh, your left hand behind your back. You're going to take your right hand and interlace your fingers into your left hand and then try to pull that left arm a little further over. And sit up nice and tall, feeling those sit bones root down. Inhale, lengthen up and then exhale, bring your right ear to your right shoulder, tucking your chin in and down. You might even put some weight on that left shoulder, drawing it away from your earlobe. Breathe into your neck and upper chest. When we feel closed off, we feel restricted, we can get really tight in the heart space because our need for security overweighs our need to sometimes help others or be compassionate for others. We don't need to judge ourselves on that if we, if we feel like we've kind of been in that space. 
can simply acknowledge that that's how we're feeling right now. Bring your head back to center. Just move your hands over to the other side of your body, to the left hip. And you still interlaced. Lift up nice and tall, and then we'll drop the left ear to our left shoulder. And you can play with where your chin is. Maybe it's tucked in, maybe it's lifted. Then take a few deep breaths as you lengthen up, and exhale out. heart space is really free and open front and back. We have the ability to be very empathetic and compassionate. Even in times of hardship, we can still find our connection to our essence and therefore we can see that essence in others. One last breath. Beautiful, come back to center, release your hands, inhale, reach up, just one more big stretch. And then a bit of a sigh as the arms come down. You'll come off of your cushion, come onto your hands and knees, tabletop. If your knees are sensitive, you could put a cushion underneath your knees. Knees are about hip distance apart. We're gonna walk our hands forward to the top edges of our mat. Keep your hips right over your knees. Slide your hands forward and sink your heart down. You can have your forehead on a couple cushions if there's a lot of space there, some tightness in the shoulders, or we can have the head on the floor. Okay? If we feel like there's way too much weight in our arms and hands, we need to just walk our hands back a little bit, walk our hips back a little bit, and then sink down from there. And this is puppy dog. Okay? If our shoulders feel too constricted or there's any pain in our shoulders, we're going to widen our hands further apart. If we're quite mobile, perhaps bring the arms a little closer together and pull your low ribs in, just finding some containment. You know, a lot of us are, are kind of sitting, sitting at a computer maybe throughout the day and we're feeling very um, confined in the front of the shoulders and the heart, even, even a little through the throat since we haven't been able to see other people or communicate maybe as much and we need a little bit of space there as well. So start to observe the flow of your breath and notice if one side of your breath feels a little tighter than the other side of your breath. If you're just joining, we're in puppy dog right now with our head on a cushion or the ground. You might even be able to feel the breath move through the lower belly and lower side body. Let's do three more rounds of deep breathing the soft tongue, and a relaxed jaw. Perhaps we can feel any tension or heaviness in the body melting down through the heart, being transformed into spaciousness and gentleness and softness to the ground. And last breath. And start to slowly walk yourself up to tabletop and back to a child's pose. Knees together or wide, hands in front or alongside your body. Perhaps the pillow under your head or under your hips if we're a little tight in our hip area to give ourselves extra comfort. These in-between poses are our rebounds and it's our opportunity to 
be deeply aware of how we're feeling after a posture, after spending some time in a certain area of our body. And our theme today is acknowledgement, awareness, acceptance, all of those kind of together. And they, the underlying piece that holds them all together is a willingness to surrender to what is in this moment, which ultimately leads us to trust. We'll take a few more moments in child's pose with two breaths, two deep breaths to your backside. Beautiful, let's rise up towards seated. Bring our feet out in front of us about hip distance apart and a bit of a distance from your bum. Let's bring our hands behind us, turn them to face back, so fingers turn away from your tailbone, hands are about shoulder distance apart. Let's give ourselves a little bit of a lift, so this is like a modified fish pose, just a little lift in our heart, that can be plenty, okay, or we can walk the hands just a little further back while keeping our heart forward and maybe we walk the hands closer together behind our back. This is only about a minute or so hold. You might not necessarily feel a stretch, but you might feel more of a, like a compression through the joints. So there's a little bit of stretching in the joints there, whether it's wrists or elbows. I tend to feel it in my elbows the most. Okay, breathe really wide into the front of your collarbones and chest. If your mind is really busy, find a point of focus for our eyes, something ahead of you. Maybe it's a book that happens to be on the shelf or a pen that's on the table. Just something to harness your awareness while you focus in the background on your breath. Okay, almost done here. Shoulders are soft. Walk your hands wider apart, and then start to rise up. Wrap your arms around the front of your shins, and then gently tuck your chin, bow your head, and soften your shoulders and shoulder blades apart from one another. Take your breath to the back of your heart now, focusing in your mind's eye, space between your shoulder blades, to the base of your neck with your inhales and your exhales. Exhales being like a decompression, inhales kind of finding all of those nooks and crannies that need more space. Beautiful, rise your head, lift your spine, hands and your shins, give yourself a nice tall spine with one breath. Well, let's bring our heels in towards our bum, cross our ankles, plant our hands in front and step back into a tabletop, hands and knees. And let's inhale, reach our right leg back behind us. Pull the navel in, just take a couple seconds here, just to feel the length of the back leg. We'll bring our right knee to our right wrist, drop the shin, walk your shin forward a little bit. You may have to move your hands. Okay, from here we'll walk the left leg back for pigeon pose, and I'll give a variation for you if your knees are sensitive or something else is going on. And this is where our cushions can come in handy. We could have put a cushion underneath our right hip, that's quite nice. And we could put cushions under our chest so we have something to lay on. Toe can point behind us. Okay, this isn't going to fly for everyone and I do um, strongly recommend that you don't pull your shin forward because then it's in your knee and, and it's not nice. Okay, the option here is deer pose. Where instead of looking something like this, you're going to sit onto your right hip, bend your left knee, up towards your right foot. Okay. 
this can look like parallel. This is the one where you can be parallel with your front leg. And your right thigh is going to be parallel to the edge of your mat. Your left leg can be as close up to your heel as possible, or it can go quite a ways back. And I get a bit of a stretch for the inner groin here. Again, cushion under hip, or cushion to thigh and fold. Okay, there's some nice options. If that's still not going to fly, thread the needle. Okay, right ankle to left thigh, right hand to right leg, and then you rest and press away, or you can bring it in. Okay, both work quite nicely. Wherever you've settled, we're going to be here a little bit longer than our other postures. This is one of our longer holds. And the hips hold our safety and security. It's our roots, our foundation. It's where we feel um, grounded, supported, safe. So as much as we work through the heart to open that space of love and trust, if we don't feel safe within our own body, we don't feel safe to exist in the world, it's going to be very hard to connect with the heart. So focus your mind, your breath, into a space in your belly or hips or legs that really feel like they're got some heat or restriction and send love to yourself. Send it with your breath, every single in or out breath. So if you're just joining, we're in pigeon right now, with maybe some cushions. Okay, lifted or down, if you want to join. Give yourself permission to really let go, to let go of all the news, all the opinions, all the gossip, all the drama. If we're going through grief, acknowledge the grief as best you can. We don't need to let that go. We can grieve if there's some, some of that going on. tongue is soft, our jaw is relaxed, our brow is unfurled, and we bring in the softness that is our essence every time we take the time to acknowledge how we're feeling. to our last minute. So if the mind wandered or the jaw reclamped, soften there and reinitiate your deep breathing, belly, ribs, chest, chest, ribs, belly on the exhale. Maybe some good sighs out in your pigeon, whatever variation you're in. And the sighs, the whole back decompresses to the ground. And wherever you may be in pigeon, if you're in the full variation, we're going to walk our back foot forward to take the pressure off of our hips 
and then with their hands planted, slide our right leg back to meet the left. Our rebound is either child's pose, knees wide, toes together, head down to a cushion or a block, or we can do some cat cows if we feel that energy needs to be moved through the body. Cat cow is inhale, we lift the heart, lift the gaze. The exhale, we press the ground away, round the back, and curl the toes under as you push up. And we repeat, inhale, point toes, dip belly, lift heart and gaze. Exhale, curl to the ceiling, navel in, toes under. Do that one or two more times if you wish. If you're in child's pose, we're observing how we're feeling. switch to the other side. Okay. So back on hands and knees if you're in child's pose, bring your left knee towards your left, oh sorry, you can lift the leg, my apologies first, and then bring your left knee to your left wrist, turn the shin forward, walk the hands forward, and just because you did one variation of pigeon on one side doesn't mean it has to be the same on the other, because we're not always built the same in our bones. So we can be here with a cushion under our left hip, our right toes pointed behind us, and perhaps those cushions under our heart, or we can stay lifted, maybe forearms or chest is down. Um, please avoid trying to yank your shin forward, okay? That just ends up in the knee joint, not the hip, and it ends up um, being detrimental over time. You might not feel it now, but wait, you know, five to 10 years doing yoga, you might feel it then. Okay, the option here, if that one's not gonna fly for you today, is deer pose seated. Or instead of bringing your knee forward like this from the front, we would sit onto our left hip, bring the left shin forward, left thigh parallel to the edge of our mat, and our right knee could be close to our foot or can walk back. And this could be a fold forward, or we could stay lifted, of course. The last variation, if the knees are still like not so happy with that, is thread the needle where you lay down and you would bring your left ankle over your left knee and maybe bring it in, keeping the shoulder soft or foot to the ground, okay? So choose your variation, get as comfortable as you can. Okay. And as soon as you found your place where your body isn't still trying to hold you in place, so really try to find those places in your body that might unknowingly be holding you in the posture and then support it with a pillow or block or a book. Okay, and then reinitiate your awareness of focus to a part of your body, pelvic floor, hips, belly maybe, and then reinitiate the deep breathing, belly, ribs, chest, and vice versa. Okay, wherever you've chosen to be for this variation, one side can be very different than the other. It can be very different. And that's okay. Um, it can be different because we have our masculine side and we have our feminine side and different motions situations, trauma, and conditioning can land in different sides of our body based on kind of which one they align to, the divine masculine or the divine feminine qualities. Same with things with family, mother, father, you know. It's, it's quite, quite literally like, like that, son. Let's relax our shoulders. We can soften the elbows wider to get those shoulders to relax as well. The jaw and the tongue, that can be quite unconscious in times of stress. So it's like a coping mechanism. But we want to cope with our breath. We want to soften ourselves with our breath versus these um, tense coping mechanisms in, in the body's muscles and, and joints.
reminder that our roots, our pelvic floor, our pelvis in general is our foundational area. So when we don't feel safe or we feel like we don't have control of a situation or there's lack of control, um, it, can, it can feel very difficult. It can feel like our foundation has crumbled because there's this lack of sense of, of control or ability to create the lives we wish to see. And, you know, the kind of the, one of the reasons why the Buddha is always seen kind of smiling and giggling and laughing is that you know, we're in search of these foundations and these ways to like structure or control our lives and we're in search for happiness and he's kind of laughing because we're always searching outside of ourselves for these things. Our jobs, relationships, um, and uh, activities, but ultimately it, it only lies within us and we're searching outside and it's, it's been with us all along, which is why he's always kind of smiling and giggling a little bit um, about that. close to the end of our hold here. Let's dive deep back into the breath if we shift it out of it. Widen the breath through your belly. See if you can really feel it through the inner sides of the hips below the belly button. Last breath here will be the decompressing one. Deepest inhale through the upper back and chest, belly, and a sigh through the mouth, decompressing the back of the heart towards the floor. And using your hands to lift your heart back up, we'll walk our back foot forward to relieve the tension on the hips. We'll come into either child's pose or tabletop hands and knees. If you choose tabletop hands and knees, we can dip the belly, lift the heart and gaze for cow, and the exhale, curl toes, tuck chin and round your back to the ceiling for cat. Child's pose would be your hips to your, your heels or hovering, and forehead to the ground and arms could be in front. Let's just do a few rounds of that and go right ahead. Think about 30 more seconds, I'll do some cat cow with you, 30 more seconds in the cat cow. Tongue is soft, jaw relaxed. Let's find yourself in a neutral spine. Let's walk our knees forward, cross the ankles, and sit onto our bum. I got my little timer here. <laughs> All right, you would likely want to sit on a cushion under your bum, tilt your pelvis forward a little bit and bring your legs forward. Okay, from here, this is a good place for some extra blocks or cushions under your knees. That's a possibility if we're really tight here and we're quite rounded in the low back or the upper back is really rounding. Okay, we want to sit nice and tall if possible. For our forward fold today, we're going to take it easy easy as we can so that bent knees can be really nice or we can take a couple cushions on straight legs and fold over a little bit more restorative for sure sort of style if you're not to have access to pillows it's okay <laughs> then my recommendation would be to definitely bend the knees uh, as much as you can to get the belly towards the thighs perhaps and then fold the head down and then breathe into the lowest part of your back to the mid back, to the upper back, or cooling in the body. So don't be alarmed if you feel some tingling or some heat or cooling there. Sometimes it feels like a bit of a prickly sensation, or you might even notice all of a sudden your arm twitches or your leg has a huge twitch, and that's just a release of stress, a release of pent up energy that's been stored.
to get to the tail end of this fold using your exhales like decompression as if you're melting from the center of your spine from tailbone to neck wide across your back and down to the floor with every exhale you take cooling and calming the body and the mind posture, don't move yet, place your hands down on either side of your knees, so the hands walk back, soften the shoulders back, and then try to move from the base of your spine, so your face and your chin are the very last thing that rises, so I'm moving, using my hands to help me press up from the base of my spine, curling up from the mid spine, connect to the shoulder blades, upper back, and then eventually my gaze. And then we're just going to sit tall, really tall. And see if your breathing can balance. What I mean by that is your inhale and exhale are the same length in counts so if you count it in your head. Like four in and four out. Let your pelvis settle, let your spine remain tall. Let's walk our knees in. If you have any cushions on the knees, take them out of the way. Hands behind us. Let's windshield wiper back and forth with the knees. Some, some space there. And bring your knees in. We're going to stay on our cushion, but you might want to turn sideways. I'm going to turn a little bit sideways for you because my heels are sensitive on the ground. Okay. And we're going to bring our right leg out okay. and our left foot to the inside of our, our right leg. And this is where, if our knee is really high, we want the support. We don't want to strain the body anymore, right? So we want that support. Same thing if the hamstring's really tight, maybe a, a book block, cushion, blanket, anything under there. And you could even put that there too for support. Let's turn our heart and navel a little to the left. Our gaze could be down, forward, or up depending on your neck. Let's breathe into that little bit of space between the lower ribs and the top of our left hip. So sometimes having our hand physically on our body where we're trying to focus and um, be attentive to is really helpful. If you'd like to bring your left arm up and over, you can do that. You can keep kind of turning the heart a little bit open and relax that right shoulder. You might need to bend the elbow a little bit more. Perhaps lengthening our inhales if you're finding them to be quite short. Okay, so staying there. If our neck bothers us, please adjust to what makes it feel a little bit nicer, whether it's hand on hip or hand on hand. You're always welcome to close your eyes. Notice how you're feeling. This is where a lot of worry can get trapped, especially in the left side specifically worry or fear or um, security, sense of security. So we reassure ourselves by tapping into the breath, the essence of this moment, to feel the peace within each moment that's accessible to us when our minds aren't in the past or the future.
Let's use our right hand to gently push ourselves just a little bit higher. Don't come fully out. And then as you breathe in, let's stretch our uh, left ribs to the ceiling a little bit more. And then exhale, let's come back down. We'll do it two more times. Inhale, we lift ourselves up a little bit. Let's push those ribs up and away. And then exhale, keep them up and away as you come a little more into your folds. Good. Last time, inhale to lift. Spread those ribs, turn the heart open. And then exhale, come down. And take your time to rise up. Maybe your hand helps your head up like mine is. We're going to sit nice and tall for at least three breaths. Left hand comes down. Notice if there's more space in the left rib cage and belly. Use your right hand to slide your right leg in. Give yourself a little uh, windshield wiper side to side or a little snuggle for a moment. And then we're going to do the other side. Okay. Left leg out. You could use your cushion on top for your elbow if that's a little bit better. Or under the knee. Okay. Or under the side if we're feeling. Um, a little restricted through the low back. This can actually be quite helpful. Even if you can do this with the leg down, it can be really helpful. Okay, so wherever you'd like to be with that one. Remember, we're going to start with an open twist. So left hand inside of the leg, right hand behind, breathe in to grow nice and tall. And then we're going to turn open to the right. Okay, so we're turning open to the right and reconnect with our sit bones, re-earthing ourselves evenly through our hips and our bum. And as we start to slide our left hand towards our left knee, we're going to bring our right hand to the base of our spine. Breathing in to get a little lift, and as you exhale, let's turn our navel to the right. Shoulder blade draws back on the right arm. And then that left shoulder can relax. We'll stay here at least for a few moments to let our body adjust to the feeling. And then your gaze can go wherever is comfortable. If you like having the arm up and overhead or to the back of the head, you can do that as well. Just make sure that parts of your body and muscles don't start to tense to try and hold you in that space. Okay. So sometimes if we're trying really hard to do something, our arm body will automatically activate areas. We actually want to relax, like, like the left shoulder, for example. Deep breaths to your lower belly, right side ribs, and ever slightly turning open on those exhales to the right. Notice you're thinking about something in particular. We can let that thought go and open to a space of love, nurture, that's what you're doing right now, you're nurturing yourself Maybe by acknowledging every feeling and every breath. Welcome in our little bit of movement. So placing the left hand a little more face down. We'll inhale, lift a little through our right side. Stretch the right ribs towards the ceiling. Keep them stretched and then exhale, come back down. Inhale, we'll lift up again. Stretch the ribs, kind of bowing them up. And exhale as you come down, turn the navel a little to the right, just a little. Okay, last time, inhale. And exhale. Very slowly, very slowly, start to rise up. And we're going to be tall as soon as we rise. Don't move your legs. Just right arm comes down. 
spine is super tall, shoulders relaxing, breathe wide through our heart, ribs and back. Face is soft. left hand under your left knee, slide the leg in, bring your knees together, hip distance, hands on your knees, give yourself a little windshield wiper. And we're gonna stay seated tall. You might still want to be on your cushion. I'm just changing directions. You may wish to as well. Don't think it'll really matter. Okay. And instead of nice and tall, hands on our shins. Let's bring our left hand behind us, give ourselves a little lift. And we're gonna exhale either the wrist, elbow, or forearm, or it could be hand, okay, to the left shin. We're gonna twist to the left. And then breathe into your lower right back, right side of your back. So an area that just had a little bit of a stretch. You might look over your left shoulder for your last two breaths. And switch sides. First lift and lengthen hands on shins. Exhale right hand behind, left hand to shin or elbow to outer leg. And you can squeeze those legs together so that you don't have the left knee sliding forward of the right. Looking over your right shoulder if you wish. Breathing into the lower left back. And return to center. Give yourself a little snuggle if you want to bring the knees closer. Head down, chin in. And then come off of your cushion here and let's lay onto our back. Make sure your, your pillows and stuff are, are nearby and accessible. And we'll lay onto our backs. Find a comfortable position. Just take a moment to feel your feet on the earth, hip distance apart about just enough that you can barely touch your heels it might work out quite nicely. Okay. If you want a little rock for a moment you can. And I'm just going to get two options based on what's available um, in your space right now. So option one is we can Take our cushions or our blocks, kind of just below our hips, as you see my bum's like here, and bring our feet together and knees wide, and then we'll have a little bit of a supported cobbler's pose, so it looks like, if you can see like that. Yeah. And then hands could be one on belly, one on heart if we wish. The secondary option, which is one of my favorites, you might have to rise for this one, is you will put as many pillows as you have near you, <laughs> as high as, you know, maybe like your forearm height, and you're going to put your feet on top, your calves on top. This is a little bit restorative influence, that's why I have the cobblers as the option for you if you wish. And you don't want your knees on there, you notice my knees are off of the cushioning, so that it feels supportive for my calves. I'm going to lay down, like so. I'm gonna bring my. I'm gonna make a groove for myself so my legs stay in place, so it feels nice and supportive. And then I'm just gonna move my hips a little so that I feel comfortable in the sacrum area, my low back. And I'm gonna adjust my shoulders as well, so shoulders down the back, and then place the arms where it's comfortable. Right now, I feel like I want that extra acknowledgement and connection to my base, so I'm gonna place my hands just where the hips are, the front of the iliac crest, the bony part there. 
I'm going to put my hands kind of right around that hip crease, the legs to the body. And then close your eyes. So once you've found where you want to be, whether it's cobblers where the feet are wide, which could also be like this with the cushions, or you're on the cushions, both are great. And this is going to be where we're going to stay. Okay, you're welcome to close your eyes. Perhaps a blanket under your head too, if you wish. And just take a few deep belly breaths, belly, then ribs, then chest when you're breathing in with the wave up to the heart and the wave down, much like the wave of an ocean or a lake coming in and going out for you. If you're a visual person, you could literally visualize your breath moving in this way, in this manner. our ultimate place of acknowledgement. You got your legs on the on the cushions, you're kind of already in your shavasana. If you've got your knees wide and cobblers, you got about three or four more breaths to be there before we adjust you into a shavasana if you don't have the don't have the pillows or, or, or blocks. Working with our themes today of acknowledgement, acceptance, and interestingly enough, I do feel that acknowledgement and acceptance can be very much the same thing. If you're willing to acknowledge it, acknowledge it, then you're there's a part of you that's willing to accept it as well. Of how you're feeling inside the outside world, we think we can control. There's a, it's an illusion. It's a Maya illusion that we can control our outside world, but realistically, we never have control of that. But what we do have is our undeniable, never-ending, boundless essence within ourselves that is untouchable by change, it never changes, it never withers, never crumbles. And that is our, our rock, our core, our heart that keeps us um, vital and stable and alive and happy. So when we connect to the space within ourselves, whenever there is difficulty, we can always lean literally on ourselves and find that softness that exists within us. The space that is undeniably yours, but is also everyone. So take these few moments to feel that essence, to acknowledge yourself, your higher self that is always with you, no matter what's happening in your life right now. Landing in a space of trust and relationship to your inner space. If you're in cobbler still with the knees wide, let's straighten out your legs. And you can move towards a shavasana. If you have your feet on your pillows, you can stay there. That's a great shavasana. <clears throat> I was going to finish today with a song for you, but because it doesn't really, I feel like it doesn't translate very well music on Instagram from a, a computer, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll repeat at the end of the Spotify and um, you, can, you can find it for yourself. It's, it's really beautiful. I wish I could play it all over this, but instead I'll leave you with a quote. Surrender is an act of power that takes the reins away from false personality and hands them over to essence. Surrender is an act of power 
that takes the reins away from false personality and hands them over to essence. False personality is everything that you think you are, your conditioning, your trauma, your ancestral lineage that has placed a, like almost like rose colored glasses over who you truly are. The world trying to define you from the outside. When we surrender to ourselves, our highest selves, this is that act of taking those reins away from these constructs of who we are to who we truly are. I'll leave you today with an affirmation you can take into your evening and your sleep and maybe tomorrow as well. And this affirmation can change based on you too. But for the times saying that I am safe, I am loved, and I have the right to love. Three main chakras. I am safe, I am loved, and I have the right to love to experience life. Please stay here as long as you want. I think I still have a few minutes on the video. Um, it was truly an honor and a blessing to be able to offer this to you through Modio Stratford. If you have the means and have the ability to donate to any of the teachers, you would e-transfer um, info at modiogastratford.com with the teacher's name as the question and the answer is Moto Yoga. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this and maybe I'll see you tomorrow for the full moon class workshop actually at 8 p.m. It's going to be a lot of fun so I hope to see you there tomorrow at 8 p.m. right here once again with me. Hour and a half. Yay! <laughs> Namaste everyone.